So I had no idea what entropy meant until I listened to this next speaker speak about entropy. So her talk is gonna be about entropy and the amazement of life and how entropy has to do with life. So please welcome Lauren Miles from Fairmont High School. Five months ago, my, fa my uncle died. Now before I say anything else to you today, I want to tell you that my goal in what I'm about to say is not to scare you, it's not to depress you in any way at all. My goal here today is to get each and every one of us here to appreciate what we have just a little bit more. So my uncle was a firefighter. So due to the nature of his job, he saw so many horrific things happening to such amazing people and his heart was so big that eventually he couldn't bear it anymore, and it wore him away until now he's gone. At the time, his death seemed to me to be the icing on the cake of a truly terrible, terrible year filled with so much negativity that I had never experienced before in my life until that point. For example, last November, a close friend of mine attempted suicide. Her entire life had just been filled with such depression and anxiety that she felt was so unbearable that her only escape was to kill herself and take her own life. A few months before that, I made a new friend. He was one of the kindest people you could ever hope to meet, and I'm so thankful to be able to call him my friend. But he has cancer. How could this amazing person have their own body turned against them? To me, it never made any sense. So all of these events happening to the people around me started to compound these fears and anxieties that had been in my life since the day I was born. Because you see, I am a perfectionist. So what that means is that I put all of this unnecessary stress on myself, striving to be perfect when even I know that that is unattainable. It is a hopeless goal. And so my life is dominated by fear for no reason. And it even has gotten so bad that over this past summer, I started getting panic attacks. And for those of you who have never had a panic attack, let me tell you, it is probably the most horrifying thing you can ever experience without having any actual risk of dying because it feels as if you are. Your body turns against you and tells you that you are near the end when you are actually perfectly okay. And it is terrifying. So all of these things started to shape how I viewed the world and it, my perspective gradually became more and more negative until one day I was sitting in chemistry class, of all places, and I learned that there was a reason why I felt this way. There was actually a force governing our universe that made the world descend into chaos. And this force is known as entropy. So for those of you who do not know what entropy is, entropy is essentially a measure of how spread out energy is. So imagine a vase just a normal vase sitting on a normal table. While that vase is sitting there, there is a certain amount of energy contained within the vase. And all of that energy is contained within a small area. The energy is organized, it is not spread out. So it has a low entropy. But if I accidentally knock that vase over, it is going to shatter into a million tiny little pieces all across the floor. The energy within the vase has now become more spread out. It is chaotic, it is disordered, and it has a high entropy. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, entropy is related to the second law of thermodynamics. The laws of thermodynamics are the laws that govern how the universe itself works and behaves. These laws reign supreme over every other law that is or was. So the second law of thermodynamics states that entropy over the lifetime of the universe 
has to increase. It will not go down. It will not stay the same. It has to increase. En energy will become spread out, and scientists believe that eventually energy will become so spread out that nothing will be able to exist. Everything will simply fade away into nothingness, and the universe will die. Entropy and the second law of thermodynamics are the reason why buildings crumble, they're the reason why plants wilt, they're the reason why glass shatters, and the reason why my vase will never be repaired. They are the, also the reason that every living creature that is, was, or will be, will decay and die and fade away. Upon learning about entropy, I started to see entropy and the chaos that it creates in the people around me. I saw it in the horrific experiences of my uncle. I saw it in my friend's depression. I see it in my own fear and how it governs my life and makes me feel like I'm being torn apart from the inside out. And I'm pretty sure most of you here probably have something in your lives that makes you feel as if the world is falling to pieces and makes your life chaotic. So while I was sitting in that chemistry class, I started to think, well, if everything's just gonna fall apart, what's even the point? Why are we even here if everything's just gonna fall apart one day? But then I had a profound realization that will forever shape my life. I stopped asking why, and I started asking how. Because if the second law of thermodynamics had its way when you think about it, we really shouldn't even be here. When you think about it, the universe, if entropy got control of it, would already have become so spread out that it would have already all dissipated and faded away and ended. So the question is, how are we here? How are we able to still be here? How is the universe able to sustain itself when entropy is constantly trying to get the upper hand on it? And so for me, when I was sitting in that chemistry class, the conclusion I came to about how we are still here is because of the wonderful force we call life. Scientists will disagree about what life exactly is, or what qualities a piece of matter we need to have to be qualified as having life, but whatever you choose to define it as, it is nevertheless powerful. You see the power of life when you see a dandelion in the grass or on a sidewalk pushing through the ground and the rock so eager to just get even the slightest glimpse of sunlight so that it can keep on living. You see it in the beauty around us from wonderful sunsets to memories with friends and to the beauty of the universe itself. Life is so powerful that our own species is so perseverant to just stay and to keep on living. If a building falls apart and crumbles succumbing to en entropy, we stick around. We build that building up again and we build it better because this is what life does. This is what we do. This is what humanity does. We defy the odds, no matter how infinitely high they may be stacked against us. So if there is only one thing that you take away from what I have to say to you today, let it be this. Whatever negative forces are in your life that are seeking to increase the entropy and increase the chaos, and make you feel as if you're falling apart, whatever those forces may be for you, I encourage you, keep fighting them. The universe is so infinite and so beautiful. How can there not be something here for you to stick around for? Whether it's love, a goal you wanna accomplish, or just the simple beauty of the universe itself, there has to be a reason for you to stick, stick around here. There has to be a reason for you to live because how can there not be when the universe is so vast and infinite? So I encourage every one of you here to go out and live your life as full as you can and go find that meaning for you because it is there. So I implore you, keep fighting on the side of life. Keep fighting to exist because when you do, you can defy the laws of physics. Thank you.